Hello everybody, Neural Lars Hands here, and today I'm going to show you how to test batteries. And I'm talking about D cells, C cells, double A's, triple A's, A's, B's, I guess, whatever they are, 9 volts, etc. Alkalines, NICADs, it doesn't really matter. This process will work on any battery. Now, it may seem pretty silly to you for me to be talking about testing batteries because everybody knows how to do that, right? You just grab your multimeter put it on volts, and check your battery, right? So let's see, I'll put it on this power cell right here. That must mean it's packed with power. Actually, it means it's heavy duty, it's crap. But anyway, this one says 9.09 .09 volts. So obviously, it's good, right? Well, no, this battery is bad. You can't just use a multimeter to test batteries. And I'm gonna describe why that is. This battery is bad, and this battery over here is brand new in the package. And this one should be good. It will probably read a slightly higher voltage, because it is brand new, 9.8 volts. But that's not the reason that this battery is good and this one is bad. There are two parameters in a battery that describe whether it is good or not. And it depends on the application. One is the voltage. It has to have enough voltage to drive your load. Two, it has to have a low enough internal resistance. This battery may work okay if you're just running a digital watch or something of that nature, but this was in a smoke alarm. And a smoke alarm, when it needs to alarm, has to draw a pretty good amount of current from a battery. If it can't draw that current, then it can't alarm. And this battery has a very high internal resistance, meaning it can only supply a very, very low amount of power. It has failed internally and it no longer works. And for that reason, you can't just use a multimeter. Now, there is a really simple way you can do this. If you have, for example, this flashlight here takes AAA batteries. I know that this light works, and I can just put in three AAA batteries, and if this light works well, then I know those batteries are good. And that really is a valid way to test batteries, but it's not a very scientific way, and it's not a way to test them individually. So there is a better way. Now, I can go through here and test each one of these batteries and make sure they're good, but, and this one apparently isn't, or am I just having a bad connection here? Oh, there we are. So, I can go through here and test all of these batteries. I think they should all be good, but uh, this doesn't really tell me if they're good or not. As I described, this is only telling me the voltage, not the internal resistance. And this here is a NICAD, so it's going to read a lower voltage. It's a discharged NICAD, so we're just going to chuck that one aside for now. This came out of a solar light outside my house. It hasn't been charged in probably a year and a half, so it's no wonder that it's dead. We'll just set that aside. But uh, in any case, I'm going to show you how you can actually test these batteries with a multimeter. Now, you can buy a battery load tester. They're pretty cheap, and you can buy them just about anywhere. And they do the base same basic procedure as I am going to do here. They just integrate it inside the tester. And to properly check batteries, you need both a voltage meter and a known load. And there's lots of ways to get a known load. I'm going to use this method. I have this aluminum resistor. It's about 110 ohms. It says on here 110 ohms. And the exact ohmage isn't all that important, but somewhere around 100 ohms is appropriate for these batteries. And I'm using this because I have it on hand, but there are other options as well. You can get this type of resistor. Uh, this happens to be a big pack that I got from Radio Shack probably 10 years ago. I'm still going through it for projects and whatnot, but they're just quarter ohm carbon film resistors. And you can use these as well. There's lots of different ways to get resistors, but some are around 100 ohms. And uh, probably only cost you a few cents to get one if you know where to look. So basically, what I'm going to do is take my resistor here and I need to load down the batteries. Well, how do I connect this to the battery, right? It doesn't really fit on there. Well, it's pretty easy. So you take your multimeter leads, put an alligator clip on it, up to this end of the resistor. So now I have this connected to that side of the resistor. And I'll take another alligator clip, connect it to the other side of my resistor, and connect it to my other probe. Now I have these probes connected through this resistor. And now all I have to do is take my two probes and check my batteries. 
I'll check this one first. This is new out of the package. It should be good. And we'll see what this one reads. 8.96 volts. It will read a little bit lower because it's being drawn down by a 100 ohm load. But that's still good. It's about 9 volts. We'll try this 9 volt battery, the one that tested over 9 volts before open circuit. And now you can see under load, it's only 2.7 volts. Very clearly bad. So this battery, even though it tested good open circuit on a multimeter, is no good. And I can just chuck that away because it is bad. Now the rest of these batteries I can do the same thing with. 1.5 volts. That one's good. Check this one. 1.5. That one's good. 1.4. This one's maybe a little bit weak, but I'm going to keep it. And 1.5. So out of curiosity, I'm just going to see what this one is. Open circuit and closed circuit. 1.426 volts. I'm going to take my load off and test it again. 1.437. So this battery is still good, but its capacity has decreased, probably because it says used by December 2011 on it, and it's now about two years past that date. I've had this in storage for a long time. It's still a good battery, but it's not as fresh as it could be. The rest of these are all in great shape. This one is bad. And that's just a quick video on how to properly check a standard battery for proper function. You can't just take a multimeter and check your battery. That won't tell you if it's good or not. You need to have a load of some sort. You can use a resistor like this or anything that's about 100 ohms. So, thanks for watching.